Hello my lovely YouTubers, in this video I'll be showing you 3 ways to which you can add realistic blur to your images. First of all, let's talk about how to manually blur images from capturing the photos from your camera. You must first use a lens with a wide maximum aperture. Lenses like 85mm, 100mm, 200mm with f-stop of 1.8, 1.4, 1.2 can actually achieve this kind of images with low depth of field or shallow depth of field. It is quite important to blow background as it reduces the distraction in the image and focusing just on the subject. Now for some reasons you shot with a higher aperture or you use a lens with a higher aperture or maybe you just want to add a little bit more blur to your images. Now this video is for you. And that brings us to Photoshop and I'll be showing you 3 techniques on how you can achieve a blood background with just few clicks. Now if you watch this video to the end, I would like to know which of these techniques works best for you. Now let's get right into Photoshop. So now we're just going to duplicate our image and I'll go to filter and then go to camera raw filter. And before going further, I just dropped a new camera raw and Lightroom preset where I used to grade my outdoor images. You can use the link on the description to get yours at a discount price for the first 50 persons. Now the new feature is called Lens Blur. It's like an AI feature that auto detects the area to be blurred. All we need to do is just click apply. We just stick on this apply right here and just wait for a few seconds and done. So now you can now adjust the blur amount. You can increase this to 100 if that works for you. And if you observe closely, you can see the wood the bed is standing on is still in focus while the background is just blurred. So I feel like this is like an AI technique, you know, it just auto detects what needs to be blurred and what isn't going to be blurred. So now you can also adjust your focus by just clicking on this brush here and just fix where you want to be focused. And also click on this brush here to choose where you want to be blurred. So I find this feature quite interesting and if you like it, you can just comment. So now you can also see different kind of bouquet. I find this feature quite interesting because you can actually um, adjust the blow you want and it's going to give you something really, really realistic. Now this is the before and this is the after. Now the next technique I'm going to be showing you will be um, this image. Now I took this picture of my early stage of photography where I, you know, I didn't have the lens I wanted to and I just didn't know how the aperture was working and so basically I shot this image with an aperture of 5.6 you can see it right here and you can see that it's both the subject and the background are kind of in focus so I actually go dig up this picture because I wanted to use it for this tutorial now we're going to you know blow this background with another method we're going to duplicate, then we'll go to select and click on subject. Now you can zoom in. You can see that Photoshop is not actually 100% giving us. You can also use your tool here to just select those area Photoshop couldn't actually select. You can take your time to do this so your image will be precise and it will look real. We're going to click on Ctrl C and Ctrl V. We're going to copy the subject and paste on a new layer. Now we're going to click on this layer and command. It's going to generate that same selection. Now we're going to go to select and modify. Now we'll click on expand. Now we're going to choose maybe between 12 to 15. I just click OK. Now if you observe the selection just expanded with a little or with some few pixels. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go to this layer behind and just um, right click and we're going to fill it up and we're going to use content aware it's going to take a few seconds now this is what it looks like after applying content aware and now we're going to go to filter blog gallery and we're going to use tilt shift now this feature kind of blows the background and in a way it fades out so now we're just going to pull this down here. Want it to look real, so we're trying to make from her foot behind looks sharp, while the rest of the background looks blur. So we can increase the blurriness of the behind, and we can just increase the blur right here. You can see the effect of 
how it just blows the background so neatly. Now we can just bring this, we can adjust this to whatever fits our image. You can see the effect it does. And I find this really, really professional. So just like that, when you're done, just click OK right here. And your image should look like this. This looks really, really good. Now for the third technique, we're, we're going to use this image right here. All we need to do is just go to filter and then go to neural filters. So now we just scroll down and go to depth below and we're just going to click on. It's going to take a while. It's going to process on device. It's going to detect the subject from the background. After loading, it's going to look like this. Now you can go down here and click output depth map and you can see it's precisely select the image from the background. You can see that though it's going to load on every click you do, it's going to load and I feel like this is like a setback. It's going to take you more time to process your image, but then it's quite precise and I got some more adjustment to, you know, play around right here. So now you can also work with your temperatures. You can, you know, bring your background. You can just, you can just tweak the background um, to your own taste, you know, and just play around these features right here. Now you may want to add some green to the background so it look a bit real, so it will, it will look all smooth. So now you can toggle this icon here and it's going to show you the original and the edited. You can see the difference here. This looks really, really nice. So that's it. That's three different techniques of blowing your background using Photoshop. So thanks guys for watching. You can leave a comment below on what technique works best for your images. I would love to know. I'll see you on the next video.